Hi, everybody. Back in 1951, a 14-year-old teenager by the name of Roger Penske stood somewhere here in turn four with his dad taking in his first Indianapolis 500. He was mesmerized by the sights and sounds of this great race as Lee Wallard won that day. 71 years later, RP, the captain, now owns this great racetrack, and he's all about preserving the history and looking towards the future. Penske, one of the most successful names in business and racing. He's built an empire. But the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is his most prized possession. Roger told me he's dropped at least $30 million into fixing up this place since he purchased it in 2019. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of gallons of paint we've used to bring the facility back to where we want to have it, but it's little things that we've tried to do to make it fan friendly. The most important thing we can do here is to have a fan experience. You come back, your parents come back, the kids come back. I want to go to the Indy 500. Did you ever second guess yourself during the pandemic, why did I make this investment and buy this place? Did you ever have that thought? Well, I guess you'd have to say, why did I make the decision so fast back in, I think it was October of 19, when Tony George came up to me and said, I want to see you in Indianapolis to talk about the future. The fact that our family could carry on Tony Holman's and the Holman family's great work to maintain this track over so many decades. And it was a quick decision and certainly not one that I ever felt that I was sure I did. In fact, I'd do it again if I knew even knew the circumstances. You would? Yep. Does your family understand your passion for this place? You've often said you don't golf. This is your hobby. This is your life, right? Well, I call this an opportunity. My wife said, you're coming home with another opportunity. This is a little bigger one than normal, obviously. That we as a family want to be known as someone that added and made this place better. So what you're telling me, your family's in this for the long haul. I would hope so. Yeah. You're 85, you're not slowing down. Why, why not slow down? Not, if I slow down, I stop. You know, that's, you, you, gotta keep, you gotta keep moving. Successor to you. Is there someone in your family that you know they will carry on your legacy? How will that play out? I think from a Speedway perspective, you know, we've got a family that's all interested, and I think it would be up to them to decide, you know, who would be the one that would be maybe become chairman. What do you want your legacy to be? You know, I, I don't have a list of things I'm trying to check the box at all. I hope that people understand I was a competitor, a good competitor. My big stamp should be today when I'm working with people to try to make them better. That I help people be better, I help them in their lives, and to me that's my would be my story. Great interview by Dave. That was really interesting. Absolutely. Well, some of IndyCar's biggest stars were here in downtown Indy tonight. They were walking the red carpet for the premiere of the new documentary, The Club. It features the four four-time Indy 500 winners, A.J. Foyt, Rick Mears, Elio Castroneves, and the late Al Unser Sr. All of them coming together for this very special and exclusive conversation. What a humble situation for me to be here among these amazing, amazing legends. Um, I, I, like I said, I, sometimes I pinch myself. Am I supposed to be with these guys? They are, they, they drove everything, they win everything. When Doug and Mark and the guys set that up, I thought this, you know, this is gonna be great. Yeah, Cause what, what is the opportunity? How many times you get that kind of opportunity for all of us to get together? And fortunately we did when we did. And you can watch the club right here on Channel 13 Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock right before the Grand Prix.